Great. Well, I'm super, super excited to be here today to talk to you guys about professional development. Um, I'll give you a brief introduction of my background, but first I'll give you an overview of what I'll be speaking about today. Um, so hopefully I'll keep you guys entertained. Uh, I know that you just had lunch, so you might get tired. Um, but I created a few good memes that you guys can keep a lookout for. Um, so the topic is scale or fail, the secret to a successful career. And I've basically narrowed it down between six things for you guys to keep in mind as you navigate your career. Um, technology's changing so much, so uh, in order to be competitive, you really have to uh, be able to put yourself out there in many ways. So first, it starts with you, your mindset. Um, then uh, it's what I call the change quotient. Um, next is interpersonal skills, which is really important for developers, architects, any of the non-technical and technical teams. Leadership development, whether or not you want to be a you know, hands-on or leader, those are still very important skills. Uh, mentorship, which I know a lot of people cringe at, but that is key um, for your career growth, um, as well as career transitions. So who am I and why am I here? Well, my name is Kayla Booth. Um, I am an account manager for Zebia, a software consulting company. Um, we're global and based out of Amsterdam. I started for them about a year ago. Uh, and before that, I was in staffing for uh, five years. So I've helped a lot of uh, technologists with interviews and taking next leaps in their career and what not to do. So I'm sure I'll have some good stories for you guys. Um, but I'm very involved in the technology community and uh, very, I've helped raise over $500,000 for um, women technology, girls IT, um, TechBridge, which is a nonprofit it's a technology nonprofit for nonprofits. Um, so they work with, five, I think, like 200 nonprofits throughout the nation um, and help with technology solutions, which is really neat. Um, and I've also been on the board of directors for ATP. So when I'm not doing all that, um, I did grow up doing pageants. I started when I was 14. Um, and last year in 2018, I won the title of Miss Georgia USA People's Choice. Um, and my platform is actually uh, advocating for girls and women to, pers to pursue STEM careers. So very passionate about technology. I love to understand how tech drives business and um, that's why I love like being in scrum meetings or demos and really understanding the hi behind the nuts and bolts of what drives you know, our world today. So also I have a Frenchie, like she mentioned, I travel too much so my twin sister, he uh, lives with her most of the time, very spoiled and I ride horses. So that's a little bit about me. Um, so first, let's jump in with a mindset. Um, do have a question prepared for you guys. I want to ask, how many of you have ever in your entire lifetime asked yourself, who am I and what do I want? Can I see, raise my hands. Okay, everybody should be raising their hands. Um, if you've never asked yourself that, then you, know, you pretty much leave it up to the decision of others to decide what you want. Um, so that's why it starts with you and mindset is very, very important. Um, especially as developers, you know, you hit so many brick walls, you might have to refactor code, go back and do things over and over again. It can really start to get at your ego. Um, it can really start to like, you know, make you lose confidence. So it's really important that you consistently are, you know, benchmarking how you feel. And um, so first point I want, do want to make um, is risk versus failure. Stepping outside your bubble is really important. People get stuck in their comfort zone, um, whether it's you know, sticking with the same language or maybe during planning sessions, they don't wanna bring up, no, I don't think we should do you know, the feature that way, I think we should do it this way, um, and maybe they don't wanna speak up. So um, being bold is really, really important. And you know, if you, a lot of you know, people, some people are introverted, some people are extroverted, you have to value both of those. But if an introvert isn't speaking up, then it's really important that you know, they don't let that opportunity pass by. So know what you are, you know, who you are, know which way you, toward, you try to lean towards. And um, you, know, you also have to be both humble and confident. Um, there are a lot of really amazing technologists out there. And I think you can be both. I think you can know your strengths, build upon them without steamrolling over other people. Um, and I'll get into like teamwork and things like that later on. But you can be both bold and humble. Um, 
and confident in what you do. If you don't know what you're good at, then it's hard for other people to recognize what you're good at. Um, so later on, I'll talk about like knowing what your strengths are, but that starts with knowing what you like to do as well. Um, another thing is the comparison trap, which is really key. Um, it's just a human thing. We always compare ourselves to others, especially women. I know that uh, you know we're focused on diversity, which is really amazing that 67% of the speakers are women here, shout out. Um, so there's no other conference like that. So I think that's really cool. Um, and uh, the comparison trap is something that we do have to pay attention to for ourselves and for others. Um, I don't know why this keeps trying to connect to the internet, but I don't need it, so. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's really important that we keep doing those benchmarks and checks with ourselves and say, hey, you know, am I comparing myself to somebody who's, you know, been working with this language for five years and I've only been working with this language for one year and I'm getting frustrated? So you constantly have to remind yourself, like, how far you have come. Another thing is good versus great. Um, and I've seen perfectionism get to a lot of devs. You know, they want it all to be perfect, but um, you know, you also have to look at adding value um, and delivering things on time. So that's really important when you're, you know, working with clients and knowing like what, you know, where's that fine line. So the way, the best way to do that, a tip to add to your uh, personal and professional repository is that um, you can know what the business values um, and then know what your team values and then that way you can kind of understand, hey, you know, business wants this to happen. I know all of us care about, you know, clean code and reusable components and things like that. But for the sake of this little feature, we just need to kind of get it out this week. So just kind of knowing that. Um, last thing is empowerment. Um, like I mentioned with you know, knowing your strengths, always empower yourself, especially when you hit that brick wall, um, and have little quotes. Um, I always keep a quote on my mirror. Um, it says commitment, and um, I have like a definition with that, so I read that um, many times throughout my day, and I also have a little sticker in my car that says slow down, because sometimes I'm like, like to make decisions really quickly and like am the first to you know jump on something, but then sometimes I'm like, okay, I can't can't do that and balance everything at once. Um, so I think empowerment is really important, whether it's you know empowering yourself or others. So uh, oh, and I love this Yoda. Much to learn, you still have. So um, this is what I meant by health checks and benchmarking. It's just a little meme that I found. So. When you're starting a new project, you're like, hey, this is my attitude. I want to do that and jump on it, take, the, take that initiative. And then all of a sudden, like down the road, you're like, wait a minute, why did I do this? So that's why benchmarking is really important. Um, one recommendation or tip that I really have that a lot of people don't really have time for, but I believe you, know, you can really make time for anything um, is you know, keep like a monthly like check-in, whether it's a Google Doc or something, and write down what you did in that month um, so that you can always go back and refer, refer to what you actually did. And that helps, you know, get you excited about your growth and what you're going to do next. So maybe it's like a new feature that you did and you, you know, used a different library or, you know, you're working with new APIs, things like that. Um, another reason why benchmarking um, is so important for yourself is so that you know your strengths and you can talk about them. So I'll talk more about like leadership development and mentorship, but this like benchmarking yourself is really important so you know what you've done, what you're good at, and when you can speak about that to other people, that's a huge, huge skill. Not to mention, a lot of people who interview that I've coached are, they have a hard time like talking about themselves. So this will help you if you're going to make a career transition um, be able to talk about that as well. So we'll talk about career transitions later. But um, So change. Um, this is what I call the change quotient. Um, in our industry, things are ever evolving, changing, and um, you know, there's new frameworks that come out all the time. How do you decide what you're going to do? So um, the best way that you can decide for your tech skills is always research. Um, you know, what's new, what's coming out. There's so many different online resources that you can use. Um, also, if you don't have much time to like research, you can always go to meetups and talk to people who've done the research for you. <laughs> That's what I like to do is learn by talking with people. Um, so YouTube videos, there's so many YouTube videos out there by developers 
um, that have already done the research as well. So if you're not a big reader and you like to watch YouTube videos, you can do that as well. Um, conferences like you're doing today, hey, you're already making a step in a really positive direction. Um, so those are things that you can do to change the trajectory of your, of your tech skills. Um, role and responsibility is um, really key as well. So I just had um, one of my clients move from a developer role to a, um, a project manager role, a scrum master role. How did he do that and why did he do that? Um, well, he decided that you know, he was comfortable with the Java language and this big enterprise application. They're moving it to um, Java on the back end and Angular on the front end. And then we, we, um, we upgraded it to Angular 6 right when it came out a few months ago. So um, he decided that you know, he was at the point in his career where he wanted to be, you know, wanted to take that next step. And we'll talk more about that in, in career transitions. But what did he do to do that? He got a Scrum Master certification. So those are things like you can do if you want to grow your role and responsibility. Don't get comfortable in your little bubble. Like, hey, I'm going to stay over here. It's safe. Like, you know, research and be like, okay, do I need to get certifications? Should I take a course? You know, things like that will really help you um, understand. Do I want to take that next step in in my career? Or do I want to pick up those additional skills? Lastly, is industry. The industry, just as much as tech and languages, is changing so much. So now you guys are hearing a lot of buzz on AI, machine learning, and you know, uh, blockchain, and all those cool buzzwords. Um, but research is really important when you're um, considering what industry you want to be in. Um, so to give you an example, like media is a lot farther than the than the insurance industry. So you know. Understanding the problem domain and knowing if you're going to be, if you're going to actually like it, uh, it will affect your fulfillment, your level of fulfillment, which is really important because you're spending probably over 40 hours a week doing your day job. So um, that's why it's really important to know: Are you going to like the industry that you're working in? And I love this quote um, by Rebecca Garcia. So I sprinkled a little quotes from women and tech leaders in here for you guys. It says, it's so easy for us to get caught up in negative patterns versus seeing what positive change you can make. Especially for women and minorities, we need to learn to see challenges and uh, see challenges as stepping stones instead of failures, which goes back to the benchmarking that I mentioned. So they can really bring your experience, um, bring you experience and closer to your goals. Um, so I don't know how many of you have watched Fander or Black Mirror yet. Uh, <laughs> can I see a raise of hands? OK, perfect. I'm not alone. It's a Netflix uh, original that just came out. And um, this guy on the left, he uh, is being controlled by the viewer. So it basically brings like Game Boy, shout out Nintendo, for, I think Nintendo's here, um, to content, to film. Um, and yeah, so that's what I mentioned earlier. Like, you really should know where you are now and where you want to be. Make those goals. That way, you know exactly, you know, what decisions you can make along the way to get you there. Um, okay, so interpersonal skills. Um, communication is really key uh, in technology. No matter whether you're entry-level developer, uh, you're, you know, senior or mid-level, or you're working on the front end or the back end. It's really important, um, especially when you're, you're in the, your planning sessions, speaking with the, the product managers, and you have to go back to the drawing board a few times or t explain to them why you can't do you know, a user story a certain way, and it has to be, you know, the re user story has to be rewritten for what they want. Um, so that's why communication skills are so important. And um, whether you're speaking to technologists or non-technical teams, um, so always ask for feedback. That's very, very important, especially if you know, you're know you dev and you're speaking to a scrum master and be like, OK, do you, do you understand you know, what I mean? Or you know, should I explain further? Or especially for if you're working with a product owner. Um, having an open dialogue is really important. I've seen a lot of times where uh, companies are transitioning from waterfall to agile, and like, teams aren't really like, fully bought into it. Uh, and it always kind of creates a, what comes first, the, the business requirements or the technology. 
Um, so it's really important to like have an open dialogue and not be afraid to like talk to people even if it's not like an official uh, meeting. So and also being very patient, which is which is important when you're explaining something. I've seen a lot of people like not understand why people can't get something, um, and maybe people just learn a different way. You just draw things out, map it out, do um, do design docs. Um, or use Confluence or something like that to help you. Um, so listening skills is also very important. Um, there's a lot of people that want to jump right to it instead of like listening to other team members, especially if you're you know pretty dominant. Listening skills will get you so far in your career, and you know they'll really help you talk to executives. Um, you know get your ideas across. You know be able to navigate like your not just your team but within the organization as well um, so and then lastly uh, is collaboration we kind of touched on the teamwork earlier but um, it's really important to check yourself see if you're being a team player and also um, you know people change in their careers like maybe somebody who used to look up to you gets a promotion before you do mainly because you just want to stay hands-on but it's really important that you know your peers respect you and you respect your peers because you don't know who's gonna you know be your future boss one day or maybe you'll be their future boss one day and if you kind of rub them the wrong way you know when they were on your team then maybe they won't respect you and kind of want to deliver things on time for you so um, sometimes you got to put your ego down when you're collaborating uh, with your team so uh, I put this quote up there too uh, that kind of ties back to like my last point is um, be careful and protect yourself. Um, always ask for help. Um, that's actually my worst quality, and I, I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm terrible about asking for help. So you guys have to know what you're bad at just as much as you have to know what you're good at. Um, let's see. So I love this. I don't know how many of you guys have seen Silicon Valley, but I've seen all the episodes. I created this meme for you guys. What do you mean you know everything? So sometimes we like to know everything. We like to pretend that we know everything. But actually, you know, I've seen people uh, go into interviews and admit, like, hey, I don't know how to do this. But you know, I would, to figure it out, I would go through this step, this step, and this step. I've seen people get jobs by saying that versus saying, oh, yeah, 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 I know how to do that. And like just BSing, no, they don't know how to do that because they can't explain it. So admit what you don't know. <laughs> Um, last, uh, next thing is leadership development. Um, originally, I didn't throw this in there, but I, I feel like it's really important um, whether or not you want to stay hands-on with technology or you want to grow into leadership skills. It's not really like leadership skills. It's kind of like more just um, skills in life. <laughs> so we touched on self-confidence and knowing what you're good at. Um, positive attitude, I think, is very, very important. You have to always be very optimistic, especially if you know the database keeps crashing and the code's not working and stuff like that. So um, always have to have a team attitude, and especially when you're, you know, other people will want to work with you if you're like building other people up and being encouraging. Um, being coachable is really important, um, whether it's, you know, maybe your architect is coaching you on how to do a design pattern or reusable components. Um, or maybe your um, scrum master is like, hey, instead of you know, just like immediately saying, hey, I need to code this and coding it, go to the drawing board and map out what it's going to take to do it, and then maybe figure out, maybe it needs to be added to the backlog for the next sprint or something. Um, things like that will really help you. Um, so coping well under pressure is also very important, um, especially when timelines and deadlines come up and um, there's a lot of upper management pressure or maybe something keeps breaking and your team is like why are you, you know maybe we should take this user story from you and give it to somebody else like there's no harm in that no harm no foul maybe you're better at something else so uh, being uh, being flexible in that aspect is really important um, and uh, finally just time management skills uh, I think that's uh, something that I'm falling behind on <laughs> But, uh, oh yeah, I did love this. Did you guys see Bird Box? Yeah, it was, I, yeah, so lead or be led. Um, so I guess I've got, oh, I have five minutes, okay. So mentorship, there's a bad stigma around mentorship sometimes. 
Um, people are like, oh, mentorship, 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 like, I don't really need that. Well, let me tell you why it's really important. Because if you don't have a mentor within your organization or outside your organization, and you come across you know, a problem that you don't really know how to solve, um, then it's really important that you can go to people that you trust. So you have to develop those relationships. So earlier, like I said, um, you know, you can go for seeking mentorships externally. You can go to networking sessions, meetups, things like that. People that you see regularly and that you trust or people that you've worked with in the past that have gone on to a different company. Um, those are always good ways to, to have mentors as well. So, but within your organization, establishing alliances are really important. Don't stay within your bubble, within, within your team, like get outside of your team because, you know, organizations are big and some teams experience problems before maybe you even experience a problem. Like a lot of enterprise companies today making that agile transition. Maybe a team did it before you. So kind of knowing what they came across, uh, how, you know, how to assi assign points to, to user stories, things like that. Um, so it's really important to just get outside your team. Um, and uh, also uh, reverse mentorship is not really talked about a lot. Uh, I think it's really important um, that people understand that you can learn from different generations um, and that, you know, maybe you're, you're married, you've got kids, and you don't, you know, if you have a whole life at home and it's hard for you to, like, spend time researching, uh, but maybe somebody who's more junior in your career, in their career, you can be like, hey, Samantha, what do you think about um, this technology? I haven't had time to, to learn it or research it yet. Like, would this be something you'd be interested in, like, researching and, like, giving me a recap on? Um, like, you can always empower other people on your team to do extra research and, um, you know, maybe they, they mentor you in your soft skills as well. So um, that's really important. And then it kind of ties back to uh, your alliances within a company is rebranding uh, yourself and your inner circle. So you guys have all heard that saying that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time around. So um, that is very, very true. So don't just stay within your scrum team or within your, your group, your feature group. Like, get outside and learn from other people. And that will help you get ahead in, in your career in many ways because if a new, maybe an architect position comes up and you're on, you know, a development team, uh, that there's not going to be an opening position for a long time and you want to take that next step, if you have alliances within the organization and talk to people regularly, they'll be like, oh, that person, like, we need to reach out to them and see if they're open for this. Um, so uh, let's see, I'll skip the quote. I'm sure you guys all read it since um, I'm paying attention to time. Um, so career transitions is really exciting for me just since I've, I've helped so many people with career transitions. Um, and so there's a few ways that you can transition in your career. Um, we talked about tech stacks, new, new roles, um, and then also within your own company or different industries. So new roles uh, is really exciting, but also you want to make sure it's going in the direction that you want. So um, if you are, like I mentioned, if you're like hands-on developer and you want to stay hands-on, maybe an architect role isn't the best fit for you. So maybe, you, you know, you have to figure out what you enjoy doing, and this goes back to you. So what is it that you're going to enjoy doing? Maybe you don't like managing people, so you just don't want to do that. But you never know if you don't explore, so it's always a good idea to, you know, interview other people in those positions to see, like, hey, what's a day in the life of this? So don't just, like, assume, oh, I wouldn't like that. Like, ask around and figure out, you know, maybe what their, some of their challenges are. So it's kind of like a reverse mentor. Um, new languages uh, is very exciting because there's so many different new languages and frameworks that always come out. Um, and then as soon as you know it, there's like job postings and it's like, okay, wait, there's not anybody that has this yet. Um, so it's like when Angular 6 just came out, it's like, this person must have Angular 6. Okay, um, well, hopefully all of you guys have like dabbled with it uh, a little bit um, at the least, but um, Picking up languages, pay attention to whether it's going to be, you know, something that's going to come in and fizzle out or if it's uh, technology that's going to stay in for the long haul. And then lastly, transitioning domains. I talked about a little bit about it earlier is make sure you like the domain that you're in. 
But a lot of people say that you have, you know, three different career opportunities. You're currently in, um, like, the healthcare technology industry. Um, say you want to get ahead in your career, then you should move into a industry that has more innovative technology um, so that you can get your hands on, on that and stay really competitive. Otherwise, if you go from healthcare to, you know, insurance, then that's not pretty, you know, that's not very good. But <laughs> uh, finance is, is actually getting up there. They're progressing at a, a quick rate. So FinTech is actually huge in Atlanta. Um, I think there's like, there's like 100 FinTech companies here. So um, that is about career transition. So that's all I have. And oh, it's perfect timing. Thank you, guys. You know, normally I would use this time to go on a rant about Bird Box and how it was not a good movie. Oh, But I won't do that because that was such a good talk. That was like a lifetime's worth of career advice in 25 minutes. And like every single one of those slides has so much information there. It's so yeah. useful. Yeah, I hope you guys could take some photos. Um, I didn't know if I was going to hit the 25 minutes, though, honestly. You could have gone I have so many you could stories. Go hours into that, though. So That's many the stories. thing. <laughs> There's so many good, like, so much information. I think of it, too, is, as engineers, is like applying that. It's like we're always trying to be more technical and learn a new skill set, new language. But that, like doing that and just like listening and talking to other people is, is where you mm -hmm. grow as an engineer. So yeah. all that information was amazing. Oh, it was good. great. The comparison trap. Did you like that one? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm guilty of that. It's something I, I'm working on, like personally in 2019, is just like having less of an ego, just being more open to listening to someone. I can't say like, oh, this person isn't that smart. I'm not going to listen to them because everybody has something to teach. And I've been personally really bad about that. Yeah, and, and they can feel it too if you think that way. Um, which you don't want to like show your cards because then if they know that you feel that way, then they're like, eh, I can slack, you know? <laughs> but if they know you're invested in them and you believe in them, then they'll do anything you say. <laughs> Absolutely. And the, the whole point about um, just being kind all the time to people because you just don't know who you're going to run into in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, yeah. Ryan, you, you hired me from a conference a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. Would, didn't know you were looking to hire, and well, we, just we, we met there, and then we connected after. That's yeah. True. yeah, we hired a few people from uh, NG Atlanta last year. They yeah. work at Netflix now. It's just like the point is, you don't know who's listening, and you don't know mm -hmm. just being kind to people and just being a good yeah. person in general will take you really far. In life. I think the key word that I took away from it, which I love that you said, humble. Like being oh, humble yeah. is so key. So huge. So I have one interesting thing, and, and Gem and I both. Uh, I mean, I do a ton of interviewing at Netflix. Um, mm -hmm as well as I've been obviously interviewed at other companies and Jem helps a lot with the interviewing. Yeah. Interviewing horror stories, <laughs> like seriously. Good one. Okay, this would go back to my staffing days. I still interview a lot of people for my projects now, but they, um, they've been technically vetted and, and everything like that. So I know that they're good. Um, I just have to vet them on the soft skills. But when I was in staffing, um, it wasn't my candidate. It was uh, for another client and this woman gets on her hands and knees and meows. Like she gets <laughs> under the table and starts meowing like a cat. And I just wish they had like a video there so I could see, but like I would have died laughing. What was the context on that? Like, um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I mean, obviously she didn't get the job, so don't ever do that. Um, but I think it was like for a, a I mean, I guess she just like, was like, in, I think it was like a support role, like a um, coding, like customer support role. And I don't know what was wrong with her. Maybe she didn't take her medication that day. But I mean, if maybe it was like was for an acting job or something. Maybe so that's like an appropriate no, time. No, she was meowing. No, no, I yeah. mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love cats, but uh, it was for uh, Home Depot, which wasn't my client, with, right. thank God. <laughs> There's actually a few home, I see them over there. I talked to them uh, I wonder guy. if you guys have heard that story. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Well, so if, oh, go ahead, Ryan. No, go ahead. So if there's any just, you know, I, I just graduated from boot camp or I just graduated from college, I want to get my first tech job. Is there any just like concrete advice you can give the people? Create a GitHub and start forking code and use that as your portfolio. I mean. Um, that's really important um, to getting your first job out of uh, technology and having like samples uh, is really important. I've hired a lot of um, Georgia Tech grads and Kennesaw State grads and stuff. Um, and when you just have your resume like with school on it, that's not 
like very helpful, but internships are key. Yeah, it's, I so. mean, at that point, it's experience that you mm -hmm. can point to, like I've actually done yeah. something in the real world and, and that's a lot help, a lot more helpful for when I'm looking to hire, it's, that makes a big difference. Yeah, so I think that would be like the main takeaway. I mean, of course, there's a million other things, but. Uh, what's your Twitter so you can tweet out slides and we can all share yeah. them out? It was in the bottom corner if you're paying attention. At, I don't pay attention. At <laughs> Kayla Jean Booth, K-A-Y-L-A. J-E-A-N-B-O-O-T-H. Awesome. So give her a follow and yeah, we'll have to check out the slides. There's so much information in there. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank an amazing you. talk. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>